Look, I ran 100 miles with 22,000 feet of elevation gain, and the next day, I wasn't sore. How's that possible? There's never been a drug or a substance or an intervention or a protocol that can improve how much oxygen you utilize. Until now. This is a training where you're actually gonna be able to walk away with a small nugget of information that is gonna unlock a better performance. Today, we're gonna to be talking about two food substances that you can eat that are going to improve your performance, improve your recovery. And we know this for sure. This has been peer reviewed in the evidence-based literature uh, since 2013 and many times repeated since. Here we go. So the new one is watermelon, specifically watermelon juice. Now I'm gonna tell you about a, an experiment that was done with endurance athletes and watermelon juice and tell you what happened here. So they took um, endurance athletes and they put them on a stationary bicycle and they grouped them into three different groups. One of them received watermelon juice that was unpasteurized, meaning that it's just take a watermelon, let's juice it, that's it. They took another one where they had watermelon juice and they pasteurized it, meaning that they heat it to a critical threshold where bacteria are killed off and then they let it cool back down again. And then they did a control group where they isolated the amino acid, the citrulline amino acid out of the watermelon and then just put it into water. And then they took the athletes and they had them do a maximum effort test on a stationary bicycle. And the athletes who had the watermelon juice, either kind, had an improvement in both their recovery heart rate, meaning after they did the maximum test, they then measure how quickly their heart rate returns to baseline compared with control. And the athletes who had the watermelon juice, pasteurized or un unpasteurized, both had an improvement, but the athletes who had the unpasteurized juice had a better improvement. Duh, right? Does this make sense? Because all of the discussion that we have about nutrition, it always leads us back to kind of the same things. And it's eat your fruits and vegetables. Don't manipulate them. Don't add oil. Don't fry them. Don't add sugar. Don't whatever. Just eat them in as close to their whole form as possible. And juice is pretty close to a whole form because we're not really removing anything chemically. We're removing some fiber. There's a wall there. And we're not adding anything. We're not adding sugar or salt or flavors or colors. It's from a whole food. So I assume you could just eat the watermelon too. But what they found was not just an improvement in recovery heart rate after the workout, but they found that muscle soreness, they measured muscle soreness, delayed onset muscle soreness called DOMS. You've heard of this before. They measured that 24 hours after the test. Now delayed onset muscle soreness means that if you go and do a pretty tough workout, you're unlikely to be sore right after. But the next day, you can get sore. And even two days after, and even three days after, you can be increasingly sore. But normally about 24 hours after is kind of the peak of soreness. It starts to get better. So they measured it at that point. And the athletes with the unpasteurized watermelon juice were least sore, pasteurized second, and control group third. Still had an improvement over no uh, intervention, no citrulline, but in that order. So that's number one. I want you to hear that. And I'm going to tell you a story at the end of this that highlights how effective this is. But number two is beet juice. Let's just take a look at what's going on with beets for a second here. I'm going to give you kind of a snapshot here. So we breathe in oxygen and we deliver it, goes through our, our lungs. We deliver it to the red blood cells, blah, blah, blah. It goes down the tube, down the tube. Eventually we use oxygen in order to create energy ATP. And this is chiefly done in the mitochondria through the Krebs cycle. You don't need to know that right now. Just know that you use oxygen plus fuel to make energy. Now, how much energy you have is going to dictate how much output you can do. So once again, in the study that I'm going to share with you here, endurance athletes were used. Again, bikers. Bikers are a little bit easier to study in the lab because you can just get a stationary bike. It's a little bit less hectic than uh, even a treadmill. Uh, and it's safer too. And what they did was they took, they studied men here and they put them on a cycle ergometer, uh, basically a stationary bike. Now they used a time to exhaustion test. The same athletes, a time to exhaustion test without the beet juice was nine minutes and 43 seconds at whatever given speed that they were using. Nine minutes, 43 seconds. Then with the beet juice, and, and mind you, before I tell you this, there's never been a drug or a substance or an intervention or a protocol that can improve how much oxygen you utilize. 
until now. So they drank two cups of beet juice and they went from 943 to an average of 1115. And they're measuring the gases that are inhaled and exhaled. And so they can measure how much oxygen you're using. These athletes did the same work output, the same power output with 19% less oxygen. So they kept the speed the same between the two tests. On the second test, after having beet juice, they used 19% less oxygen at the same power output. And they went, whatever percentage that is, 20, 20% or so longer until they were exhausted. And that's just from having two cups of beet juice. So what can we learn from this? Let's tie a nice little bow around it that you may want to have watermelon juice and beet juice, but you also may want to just have watermelon and have beets. I don't really care how you get it in. The closer to the whole food, the better. So if you have beet powder, that's maybe not as good as fresh beet juice. If you have pasteurized beet juice, it's maybe not as good as unpasteurized. So the closer you get to the whole food, the better. But however it is, like, let's make life kind of simple. Maybe you don't have the ability to make a good fresh beet juice, just get hand beet juice or eat some beets. And should you eat them raw? Well, that's maybe a little bit difficult. You could spiralize them, you could grate them. But in general, steaming, if you're going to cook, steaming is better than anything else. Not always, but in general, steaming. Okay, so let's wrap this up and I'm going to tell you a very short story. So I just ran the Hellbender 100 mile race just over a week ago, last weekend. And I'll tell you, it was a tough race. It took me 33 hours. That's, that's a long time, but I believe I can do a flat 100 miler in about 18 hours, 17 hours, if it's a very fast course. Well, this took twice as long, right? It's a very difficult mountainous course, very difficult. And during the first 32 miles of the race, 32, the only food that I ingested was watermelon juice. And I, I believe I had one apple and I had maybe eight or 10 dates as well. So it's all raw. It's all fruit, but mostly watermelon juice. And I had a gallon and a half or so, a gallon to a gallon and a half of watermelon juice in those first 33 mi 32 miles. Afterwards, I ate a little bit more cooked food just to get the calories in. And it was hot too, and taking a little bit of salt. But I continued with the watermelon juice. I just didn't have it exclusively. It consisted probably about 20% of my calories for the rest of the race. Lots of watermelon juice. And why am I telling you this? Because something amazing happened. And that is, yeah, it was a difficult race. It was exhausting. I got to the finish line and I felt pretty good. But I mean, when I got home, I was just tired from just running for 33 hours, right? But I fell asleep. I woke up the next day. My back was a little bit sore, but that was it. My legs were fine. There was essentially no soreness. Now I could tell in my legs that I had run hundred miles, but they weren't sore, really. Now, part of the reason is because we're going at a slow pace for hundred miles, right? If I sprinted a road marathon, I might be more sore, who knows? But look, I ran hundred miles with 22,000 feet of elevation gain in the mountains over rocks and roots with across water and all this kind of crazy stuff. And the next day I wasn't sore. How's that possible? Well, I'm telling you that Part of the reason is likely because I had about two, two and a half gallons of watermelon juice during the race. And then after the race, I had leftover watermelon juice. I drank about another half gallon of watermelon juice in the next like 24 to 48 hours. All right. I didn't have any beets. I had maybe a very small amount, but negligible. I didn't use beets this time. Um, that's the power of watermelon. Improve your performance, improve your recovery for sure. Now, with that said, I hope you got something really valuable from that. Um, I really encourage you to be using these foods. And just because watermelon and beets have been studied, let's not write off other fruits and vegetables here because maybe they just haven't been studied yet. So have watermelon, have beet because we know it works. But I encourage you to just eat raw. So that means uncooked or unpasteurized juices and whole fruits and vegetables. It's simple, right? Okay, uh, thank you. Hey, Andrew here. Come here for a second. I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being part of Run Elite. But I really want to say thank you, especially to all of those who have got the Run Elite book. I especially want to thank everybody who's left a review on Amazon. It's helped us out so much and it's so fun. So thank you, uh, Aquar Seif, um, Mac and Blue. I want to thank Rom, Alex, Aaron, Ilsa, Dave, Eileen, Carl, Ken, Heidi, Anna, Will, Michelle, Dennis, Racy, Marilyn, 
Karen, Mimi, Ron, Yoey, Max, Janice, Chris, Ron, Paul, Brett, Tim, and Amazon customer. I'm not sure who you were. Amazon didn't capture your name, but uh, thank you everybody who's helped make this a success. Now the Renolink book has been available now for just three weeks and already there's some amazing things that have happened and I wanna share them with you because they're our win together. Couldn't have done this without you. First of all is that we have some amazing endorsements. Now the first printing of the book has an endorsement from Bill Rogers, the great marathoner who is a four-time Boston winner and three times ranked number one in the world. And Jerry Lindgren actually endorsed the book as well. Now, Jerry Lindgren is a former world record holder back in the 60s and 70s, the only runner to ever win 11 NCAA championships. You can learn a lot about him in the book. Now we have a third endorsement. I feel so lucky that uh, has come from a national champion in the trail marathon as well, Aaron Saft. And if you wanna learn more about him, we have a video that we published here uh, where him and I actually interview each other and you can learn more about him there. But I wanna say thank you to you. And we've hit number one on Amazon in running and jogging and we've hit number one on Amazon for track and field. And so if you haven't picked up your copy yet of Run Elite, Train and Think Like the Greatest Runners of All Time, then this is your time. The book is doing so well, I'm very proud of it. And it's definitely the next step for you. If you're enjoying these videos, if you're learning, and if you want to make yourself the best runner that you're capable of, not just with tips and tricks, but with actual transformation of who you're becoming as a runner so that you can get a breakthrough like some of the runners we talk about in here, Olympians who have taken two minutes off of their 10K in one single day, and marathoners who have taken 55 minutes off of their marathon in nine weeks. Can you do something like that? You can if you know how. And don't take my word for it. Take the words for it for people who have done it at the highest level, Olympic gold medalists, world record holders, all the way, all the way to people who are just like the average runner who want to become so much more. The answers are in this book. Grab your copy today on Amazon if you'd like to support the Run Elite channel and what we're doing here. And I wish you well. Thank you for being part of this. I'll see you later on the next video.